Hi all, this video lecture, let us see how a data from the main memory can be mapped to the cache memory. So we all know uh, the size of the main memory is large when compared with the cache memory. Only a particular amount of data, you can store it into the cache memory so that we can improve the speed of the processor. So what are all the data we can uh, store it into the cache memory and how it can be done. So that is what we will be discussing in this lecture. So to map the data from the main memory to the cache memory, there are three techniques available. One is direct mapping, second one is associative mapping and third one is set associative mapping. So uh, to explain this, let me take a simple processor, uh, the size of the main memory uh, is uh, 64k words and let us assume that the main memory has 4k blocks of 16 words each and it is 16 bit addressable and the size of the cache memory is 128 blocks okay so uh, let me explain how the direct mapping will be done okay so uh, to map a data from the main memory to the cache memory let us take uh, say for example uh, block number uh, 127 so where to store this block number 127 of the main memory to the cache memory so in direct mapping we use the formula block j let me take any block j of the main memory will be mapping it to j mod the size of the cache in this case it is 128 so j mod 128 so in that location this particular data will be stored so this is the formula used in direct mapping so when i say example uh, block number 127 so 127 mod 128 so the answer is 127. So, this particular block will be stored in block number 127 of the cache memory. So, using the formula J mod size of the cache memory. So, in this case, the size of the cache memory is 128. So, J mod 128. What is the answer you are getting? In that block number, the particular uh, data will be transferred so this is how direct mapping works okay when i say let me take 255 block number 255 so block number 255 mod 128 say for example again i am get, getting the same uh, answer 127 in this case what we have to do is we have to replace this data using any replacement technique and we have to store the block number 255 even though the other blocks are free since the answer is 127 we have to replace this block and store the next data this is the main drawback of direct mapping can you understand so here you have 128 blocks but still even if some blocks are free. Since the answer what you are getting is the same number, you have to go for replacing that particular block every time. Let me take a third time. If I have block 4095, again, if the answer is 127, I have to go for page replacement. So even though the other blocks are free, Whatever answer you are getting, that particular block has to map to that block number. So, in that case, we have to go for page replacement. This is the drawback of direct mapping. The next methodology is associative mapping. So, here there is no formula. You can pick any one block number and that can be replaced in any of the available blocks. So here 128 blocks are available. I can pick block number 127 and I can put it in block number 1, 2, any, anywhere, whichever is free. Then I can take block number 255, I can put it in block number 0. So in any pattern, you can store the data, whichever is free. So in this case, uh, for the first 128 blocks, 
no need to go for any page replacement so only after uh, the entire cache is full for storing the block 129th data only we need to go for page replacement so this is a uh, uh, one way of uh, like uh, overcoming the drawback of direct mapped cache but the drawback of associative mapping is the cost of this map is high. So the cost of associative mapping is higher when compared with the direct mapped cache because every time if you wanted to store the data you have to search which block is free. Among all the 128 block every time you have to go and search which is free and then in that data you in that particular block you have to store the data whereas in direct associative mapping use the using the formula we are finding out a number and in that particular number only we are going and replacing the, the search is lesser there but there we have to go for page replacement if you are getting the same answer again and again but here whichever is free you can place it there but the cost of the search is high. This is the drawback of set associative mapping. The third uh, case is set associative mapping. Here we are combining both direct mapping and associative mapping so that uh, we can overcome the drawbacks of both associative and uh, direct mapping. Here we will be using the formula J mod 128 to find out which block it has to store and in this case in set associate we can split the cache memory into sets say for example here we have taken block 0 and block 1 we are uh, using uh, two way set so you can have n way set so here i am uh, grouping two blocks as one set and block number 2 and 3 as set number 2 then set number 3 like this each uh, two blocks i am grouping as one set okay and where i will be using the formula j mod 128 and that answer will be mapping to the particular set say for example block number um, 127 means the answer is uh, set number 127 so in that set there are two blocks available. So in any one of the block, I can fill it. So this is one way of overcoming the drawback of associative mapping and set, set associative. Next time, if I am getting the same set number, again, if I am getting 127, another block is free. So I can store it. So in this way, no need to replace it every time. So for uh, K times, you will be having the free space only after the k limit has increased we will go for replacing thank you